Good morning and Happy New Year, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 3rd, 2023. Well, I hope you all had a fantastic holiday and were ready to get back to work. So how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, as you can see last week we spent um, the whole week in a very wide range chop. We just we chop up one day and chop down the next and chop up one day and chop down the next. And overall we did that on relatively light volume. Now what we're seeing this morning is the futures are trying to get very, very excited, trying to pump up the pre-market. So if that pre-market continues to show this bullishness this morning, what could occur? Well, I think there is the possibility because there's a lot of folks kind of worried about a possible recession for 2023 that we could actually see uh, those folks be punished this morning being overly short. And if they can engineer this big gap up this morning and keep that going, well, then we certainly have that possibility of pushing a short squeeze first thing here this morning. So we'll want to watch for that possibility here if they start to squeeze out those short traders. But on the other hand, we could also experience the classic pop and drop where we get everybody really excited here in the pre-market, everybody rushes into the market. Oh my gosh, I'm missing out. And then the sellers take back over and there would be reason for that potentially to occur. And the reason for that would be is just simply the fact that, well, we have an awful lot of uncertainty coming up about the next quarter of earnings and we continue to have our economy slowing and even the, um, IMF putting out a report worried about 2023 and that's actually bringing oil prices substantially down this morning. So uh, there may be some reason out there to be worried about a potential pop and drop. So let's take a look here. If those bulls can find inspiration and continue to push through inspiration, well remember we need to deal with this resistance that we re created and all of this popping and hopping around that we um, created here in the Dow. So looking across this chart, you can see we've got this resistance right through here in the chart to be paying attention to. If the bulls can push on through that area here, then we start looking just a little bit higher. Where could they potentially go? Well, I think if we pushed right on up, there's a little bit of a price level right in here, as you can see get some resistance across over here you can see all of that price action right there could be that resistance uh, to the upside that we'll have to keep an eye on now if we look at our technicals here in the diamonds our technicals in the diamonds are the most bullish of all the indexes notice we um, in the pre-market here we're trying to pop up here and test our 500 day moving average and um, you'll notice that we have significant moving averages underneath here that could potentially allow that diamonds to trigger that short squeeze to the upside. So watch that carefully if they can pull that off. We're holding above our 50. Now, unfortunately, we can't say the same about the other indexes. If we take a look at the SPY, to begin the year here in the SPY, we're looking at this gap up here this morning to see if those bulls can challenge this resistance right here in the chart see if they can break through that level but keeping in mind we have significant price resistance in the chart here on the SPY and if we can push on through there then um, the resistance area up here becomes much much stronger and we do have to keep in mind that overall we're still in a bearish trend on the SPY so we've got some work here to do now <clears throat> I didn't mention this in the Dow but if the bear were to be re, uh, uh, you know inspired the potential pop and drop um, then look for supports 
to be tested down in here if those bears were to re-engage. Now, if we take a look at our technicals here in that chart, well, notice we're rallying back to a 50-day moving average. We're underneath that 50-day, and this could be the classic failure pattern where we rally back up to the 50 and then we find those sellers and we push on down. And you'll want to keep in mind that we have our moving average squeeze here showing us a downside potential here in the SPY. So kind of keep an eye on that. Don't we don't want to be a Debbie Downer here for um, the new year, but certainly we have some technical patterns here that we're going to have to address. And if we take a look at our QQQ, well, QQQ, very similar here. We have a, um, a very bearish chart here in the NASDAQ. And although we're trying to pop this up substantially here this morning and hold on to this price support, we do have to keep in mind that above here in the chart, we have significant price resistance that we need to break. And if we can break this level, then keep in mind as we push on up, we just add more resistance levels here in the chart on the NASDAQ. If those bears were to be inspired, well, then I would look again for a retest of some of these support levels, maybe down toward those 2022 lows. We also want to keep in mind that we are still in a bearish trend here on the NASDAQ. And our technicals, well, well, they're not good here in the QQQ, but it does provide us some room. If we were to get a little bit of a bullish lift, you could see in here that we have some room up here before we hit, hit some of those um, uh, bearish technicals here in the chart. So perhaps maybe a push up into this area would be in the card. So you'll want to watch carefully for that. But also just keep in mind, there is all that uncertainty about the earnings season ahead and the recession issues ahead that we'll want to be thinking about um, and being really careful not to overextend ourselves to the long side with these technical patterns being so bearish. If we take a look at our IWM, well, IWM had a pretty good day on Friday, popping up nicely here. And you can see we're, we're really trying to pump that pre-market here um, to inspire some buyers. But let's watch that close. Notice that we have a price resistance right here in the chart. It transitions all the way over here. We've got all of these peaks here in the chart. And you can see that that is that high point that we saw um, a week ago here we tried to pump through that and just couldn't quite get her done so we do run that risk of that potential pop and drop but if those bulls find inspiration to continue to push on up if we if we want to celebrate um, this with a short or celebrate the first day of trading with a short squeeze then we would look just a little bit higher notice we've got some price resistance right in here to be paying attention to in the chart and if we can get through that well we have even more price resistance that we're going to have to deal with in the chart let alone the overall downtrend that we're still trying to deal with here in the Russell if we take a look at our technicals well there's also our problem we have that potential moving average squeeze to the short side here but if we could rally back up toward that 50-day moving average um, that does seem possible here in the chart but we'll want to watch that area as we rally back just be really careful about overextending yourself long in case those bears happen to come back in and they might come back in with a vengeance so watch that carefully now if we take a look at our uh, VIX VIX really was about as confused as anything last week. Um, we just continued to chop around in a range here. So what we really have going on, remember we broke that downtrend, but we continue to stay challenged in this chart with the resistance above. Now that would be if the bears were to get to engage, we would see that level up there break. Um, to the upside. If the bulls can engage, well, I think we're probably looking at a support level down in here that could certainly be tested. And if they can push on through that, well, why not come right back here and, and test these lows here in that chart? Now, you will want to keep in mind that well, we should get a surge of volume. Um, volume could still be a little bit light today, possibly folks still traveling. But um, I suspect um, having Monday off 
we probably are going to see most everybody back and volume should, should begin to pick up here. Maybe we can get some clarity in our VIX. If we take a look at our T2122, our T2122, well, it's not going to help us out a whole lot here today because we're right here in the middle of the range. Um, what T2122 does is it tells us where those pressure points are when we're in the overbought, oversold condition of the market. And we certainly don't have that today. Notice from where we are about middle of the range, if those bulls can follow through, well, we will quickly pump up here um, into that resistance level of the chart. And that may happen at the gap up open and that squeeze to the upside, then we could be very quickly up here into the bearish reversal zone. However, if we end up with a pop and drop and those bears engage, well, keep in mind, it wouldn't be all that big of a push um, uh, to the downside that we could suddenly be in the bullish reversal zone um, if those bears come in and push. So we'll want to watch that carefully here and maybe once we start getting some better volume we'll get a little bit more clarity. Our T2108, well our T2108 held up pretty well last week. Had a lot of chopping around. We broke to a new low and then we tried to break back through the high up here. You'll notice in this chart that we have quite a little bit of price action in here showing this area as price resistance. So watch that carefully as we pump up here if we were to break through that price resistance right in here then look for a rally back up into this level up in up in the chart keeping in mind 37 38 percent of the stocks are holding above their 40-day moving average it's tough to make a really big bullish case here on that but it may be a little bit of a an oversold case that we can squeeze this to the upside just a little bit if we were to break these support levels to the downside in the chart if the bears were to engage then that's where we're really going to probably see i think probably some panic will start coming into the market pretty quickly if we take a look at our t2107 very much the same situation but much more bullish here in the chart noticing that we've got this resistance right here in the chart but we really haven't broken this down so substantially that there'd be a problem here so if the bulls can push on through here today we'll look for this to maybe pop and push right up into these areas here in the chart notice we've got just about 40 percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day again if those bears were to push down and if we were to break the support level then that's where I think um, some panic could set into the market. Once again, I'm going to skip over T2101 because I don't think that volume is providing us any clues for momentum just yet, but we may soon see that come back into play. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. Our economic calendar doesn't have much for us to be inspired by here today. As you can see, we've got virtually um, uh, well, just a really, really light day um, here in that chart. We've got a PMI manufacturing. We've got construction spending in here that we'll want to be paying attention to. Now, keeping in mind, our PMI numbers have been horrible. We'll want to watch that. We've got construction spending here today. Um, we know that housing has been diminishing, that our consumers have been weak. So we'll want to watch carefully for that, um, that possibility that either one of these um, could provide that little bit of bearish inspiration here in the market. And as we move forward here, well, we've got some big worries um, probably ahead of us with um, our ISM, um, the job openings report, that's been problematic for us. Um, we've got FOMC minutes on um, Wednesday to be thinking about. Then we're going to hit ADP, international trade, jobless claims. So we've got a busy week of data ahead of us. Just not a whole lot for the market to get too inspired by today here on that economic calendar, uh, but certainly something to watch for. And then if we look at our earnings calendar, very much the same thing there. There's only one confirmed report today. Um, and it will be after the bell. That's SGH. Um, you might want to keep an eye on that. It's not a particularly notable stock, but 
um, trades, you know, low volume um, overall. So watch that closely. Still moving in a downtrend, but that will report after the bell today. So with that, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that quick favor, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to, to grow. Click that thumbs up button. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. And um, I want to say a huge thank you out there as well for those folks who continue supporting the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link. If you're not a member of, of Rightway Options and would like to support this kind of content without a whole bunch of hype or um, prediction um, out there, um, that's one way that you could um, support this kind of content is just click that buy me a coffee link. Um, um, certainly not required, but very much appreciated. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful. Um, a lot of emotion here in the market, in the pre-market, and um, we'll just have to be um, thinking carefully about the risk of earnings season coming up, uh, whether or not we're going to be able to push through some of these bad economic numbers and, and continue to ignore them. Um, it could be an interesting week ahead. So just be a little bit careful here as we begin the new year. We don't want to start the new year with a bunch of losses. We want to make sure that we're trading wisely and focusing carefully on the task at hand. And that is to make good quality to good quality trades that it's, it's not about the quantity of trades, it's about the quality of trades that makes a difference in your trading. So let's take a look at a couple of things. You know, one of the things I keep mentioning um, that has been holding up pretty darn well in a lot of places are these defensive sector stocks. Now defensive sector I know is very very boring and not a lot of folks want to trade the defensive sector because it's not the sexy stocks. But you know what? Um, there are times in the market where sexy um, has a new definition and sexy becomes something that you can count on, something that's not so crazy volatile that it's costing you a whole bunch of money. It may be slower moving, it may be um, not um, all that exciting on an intraday basis, but it continues to, um, to hold up very, very well. So keep an eye on some of these defensive sectors like um, um, uh, Campbell Soup here. Um, we've seen some pretty good um, holding here in Coca-Cola. Uh, good dividend payers. Um, PepsiCo, uh, maybe have a little bit more question in here, a little bit more volati volatility for sure um, in there. Um, so keep an eye on that. Um, we see other stocks like um, Hershey, however, not looking as good. We saw Altria, um, it, it had broken through resistance and kind of lost that res, um, resistance as support here last week. But if this were to pop right back up, notice that we may still be able to grab onto this trend, pop up in here and that possibility of that move higher. So keep an eye on some of those defensive sector stocks. There may be some opportunities coming in there. If you're thinking um, maybe short trading, well, there's quite a few opportunities that could be setting up for the short side. If we start taking a look at stocks like Home Depot, notice in here we have a potential head and shoulders top that could be forming in here. Watch that carefully. If we look at our moving averages, we're still holding in here above our 50 day. So I'm not, I'm not suggesting this would be ready for prime time yet, but we do know with the challenges that we are seeing in housing, um, and housing prices that there could be a little bit of weakness coming into stocks like that. So keep a close eye on it. You might want to take a look at the financials. 
financials rallying back up here toward that 50 day moving average. Look at this group of moving averages in here that could uh, certainly set up the short squeeze to the downside. Now, we do know that there's an awful lot of repo activity happening. We also know that um, these big banks are not loaning much money because of the housing market situation. So watch that carefully as we move toward earnings in here. This could be an interesting thing to pay attention to. And you will want to note right in here that possibility of that downtrend and price resistance could engage in here soon for that potential short. It's not there yet but you might want to keep a close eye. Notice we also, in this pattern, we've got that head and shoulders pattern in here and the break of the neckline coming right back to that resistance area of that neckline. So there are some reasons to be paying attention to potentially some of these financials for short positions. Also, I think there's some really good um, opportunities that could set up in some of these um, tech stocks. Noticing that we have this downtrend moving in AMD, we're rallying back to that area, that price resistance um, here in the chart coming into play. If we were to show a little failure, that might be a short trade. Nvidia had a really rough week um, last week selling off hard rallied back up sharply here right at the end of the week but let's kind of notice that we may be running into downtrend and price resistance levels here very very soon and if you take a look at the moving averages right there's that 50-day moving average so this is that classic potential failure pattern right there under the 50 so watch that closely there's going to be probably significant opportunities for short. Now, please keep in mind that I, recession is not one of those things that we should you know, overly worry about. What it really means for us as traders is it's going to be kind of a stock picker's market, I think. And a stock picker's market requires us to be very, very dedicated to our technicals and being very committed to a set of rules and a set of guidelines that we trade that keep us in high probability trades. As I mentioned before, it's not going to be um, so much the quantity of trades, it's going to be the quality of trades that we're going to have to look for if we start sliding into that uncertainty, that potential recession area period. There's going to be some long trades possibly, there's going to be some short trades. You're going to have to keep an open mind and be very, very disciplined in your trading, um, possibly um, heading into this next earnings report or this next earnings season. So be careful. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Let's um, fingers crossed for another really good year for right way options. And um, I will see you um, all in the trading room um, very soon this morning. Take care, everyone. Wish you all the best.